Hey everyone, in this video we're meeting up with Heather and Curtis to tour their DIY Sprinter van conversion. They're a creative couple who decided that living in a van was the best way to pursue their artistic goals without the pressure of renting or owning a home. The only catch is that they didn't have a big budget for their conversion, so they bought a rusty old Sprinter van and they used a mix of reclaimed and secondhand materials and things they found at the dollar store and Ikea for their build. I think they surprised even themselves with how nice and functional the conversion ended up being, so let's go check it out. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. We'll give you more information about them at the end and a discount code for a great deal on their VPN service. The name of our van is we've named him Charles Darvan after our favorite exploring uh, geologist, which is cool and a little nerdy, I would say. So our van is a 2006 Dodge Sprinter and we uh, got him for like $10,000, which is incredibly cheap for a Sprinter van. And then the rest of the build we did for about 10,000 again, and that's all inclusive with like building supplies, uh, solar, everything. So we didn't know what we were doing and we didn't really have a lot of money to do it. So we did use a lot of reclaimed materials. A lot of the reclaimed material did come from my sister's property. So it makes me think of family. And we also Frankensteined some furniture pieces. This used to be a dresser in my dad's house and he didn't need it anymore. So we brought that in and it just is a way for us to remember things that our past life we have some furniture from our old apartments and they help they help us remember the journey because you got to remember where you started to appreciate where you are this is my kitchen it is more counter space than i had in our bachelor apartment in the city and curtis and i worked in the food industry before so we like to cook we have like a rare oven to cook from and the top two burner stove. It runs off propane and we keep our five pound propane tank under here. And a lot of the design elements that you'll see are actually to like cover things up in the build because it was a DIY process. So it was a huge learning curve, but some of those I think are our favorite things like these support beams and this lovely magnet cupboard door which hides the kitty litter we just use these jugs for drinking water and then we reuse them and replace them every few months we've got a sure flow 12 volt pump and he lives under here with the water tanks so we have two 23 liter fresh water tanks and then one 23 liter gray water uh which means we just dump our gray water more often and then it runs up into our trusty sink. The sink actually was pulled out of an old RV from one of those like reclaim shops, which we discovered doing the van build and we got a couple of things from there. So pretty much everything in the van is either Ikea, dollar store, value village, reclaimed wood or ripped out of an old RV. If you've got any kind of like reclaimed furniture stores near you, super cheap and easy because then we didn't have to make drawers. One of the big things that we debated going in and kind of freaked out about was our fridge because people go with coolers and that really wasn't going to work for us because it's like either you're using ice or it's not cold enough and we had hoped to have a freezer uh, and then we didn't have the money for like a Dometic or like the really nice legit fridges that are 12 volt but we found this it was an eco-friendly fridge from just a best, best buy. buy store mm -hmm. for 88 Canadian dollars which is cheaper than any of the bar fridges um, and then we everything gets hooked <laughs> we did place it on a bit of foam because it's got a compressor in it so i think sometimes that can vibrate but it's been fine for us and having a bigger fridge and having it be really cheap was really nice too so now we enter the family room or the living space so we went with a lagoon table egg, which was very hard to find in Canada, but also necessary. It really is the nice thing. So it allows us to have a table that can move around with us. So the table is almost what led to the rest of the design. Uh, now, Curtis and I are not extreme sports people, so we didn't need a big garage. So we did go with the couch bed because we wanted to socialize and we wanted to hang out. So we basically have the L-shaped setup that you see sometimes so that you can 
like really curl up and actually both of us can like lay down in various different seating positions. So this is just a memory foam mattress. These slats just slide out and then we take these two extra cushions and fill the gap in and then we have one just smaller than a double mattress, but it works well for us because it's what we ended up with. <laughs> and it's very comfortable because I'd never had memory foam, so it actually is the most comfortable bed I've had so far. So one of the biggest things that people wonder about is, and we wondered about, is where you keep the bedding when you're not using it, so we keep it in here, in a bedding cupboard. Side thing, nobody ever talks about the seams in the mattress, like when you put the pillows together, and it can be really uncomfortable. So we just fold like a big blanket down on top instead of putting a fitted sheet around. Makes it a lot easier. And this cupboard door also ripped out of an old RV with the hardware. So that was definitely just easier than getting it. And then it's part of our whole clothing unit. This actually was easier than I thought it was gonna be downsizing and Curtis and I have the same amount of space. So this is my side and actually this is another one of those like just using what we had to secure things like whatever worked, there you go. And then this actually is an Ikea piece that we had that we built into the van. So again, anywhere we could avoid making a drawer or actually building a thing, we did. We just used something pre-made. Can I, okay. <laughs> this is Rain. <laughs> she's um, the van cat. She guards it in her way. And she's sort of the biggest reason we ended up doing van life instead of digital nomad life was because we couldn't handle being away from her. But I don't know if every cat would work in a van, but she was always harness friendly. So uh, we have thermostats for both cold and hot. So if it's winter, we can leave the diesel heater on safely without having to worry about her. And then in the summer, the fan actually has a thermostat too, which is supposed to keep it at room temperature. So um, in both conditions, uh, she's looked after. And then we have like a little cooling mat and we always leave her water out. So for heat, uh, which is especially important in the winter, uh, we have a diesel heater. Now, when we were building, budget was very important to us. So we wanted to keep our cost as low as possible. So we actually got like one of like the Chinese knockoff heaters that you can find on Amazon. And it actually works really good. Uh, it's a little noisier, I think, than the S-bars that we've seen, but like it's still, it hooks directly into our diesel tank. Uh, so we don't have to worry about fuel or anything. Uh, just the instructions were like very poorly uh, translated, but uh, other than that, it works fine. It has a little thermostat back in the back uh, that we can control it to a fair degree. Okay, this is our bathroom. Uh, we have this nice door, which we built ourselves, and it's actually very, very crooked, but it works. Um, but we just have a little uh, a Camco cassette toilet in there. Uh, and it works pretty good. I'm not gonna lie and say that it doesn't smell sometimes, like, but you have to be like really close and like it's after you just used it. So most of the time when it's in there away, it's in there away and you don't even know that it's in there. And the two parts just come together and you just have to dump the, uh, the bottom part and just keep the top part filled with water. But then when we use it, we have this, which goes across to there and gives us a little bit of privacy. <laughs> We still know what we're doing in here, but it's private enough. And it was one of those decisions that when we were thinking about van life and watching all of the videos, it was every time that somebody didn't have a bathroom, it kind of just made us think, be like, well, what do they do? Do they always have to go to a Walmart or a Tim Hortons to use the bathroom? And it was just, it was something that was very important to us. So this comes out, this is all filled with fresh water in here, and then this just pivots out and I can just pour it either into an open septic tank, which we've been lucky because our in-laws have an, a septic tank with just open a door and pour it in, or into like a pit toilet or a porta potty. For our energy, we have four 100 watt panels on the roof that we got from a company called Grape Solar out of Oregon. And uh, they've been really good with like customer service, but the whole kit came with the panels, uh, an inverter and a charge controller. Then the entire system goes down to these and they're uh, a 250 amp hour like package together. And it's very, very overpowered for our needs. And we also hook up to our alternator. So we also charge when we're driving. So it's, we could do a lot more with the system for sure. 
And then we also have these windows, which were actually a really important part because we have one fan, but we didn't have any ventilation coming in through the back. So we knew we needed to put something that opened back here just to suck the air in. So these were actually ripped out of an old RV and they really are great. They open and close and they make it seem like a retro RV. They are definitely not sprinter windows. Another thing I really enjoy that was a late addition is like the one feature wall of our van. So the criteria is it has to be special to us and be able to hang. This is a piece of my artwork. Then also we've got things from nature, things from family. So we've just got little pieces that kind of show us and show what matters to us and the people that matter to us. We uh, have a graphic and web design company called Whole Picture Media. And we also do like some social media consultation with that. And then I make some royalties from a comedy album that I recorded years ago. And uh, I put some short stories and fiction stuff online. And Heather has her Etsy store where she sells her artwork. So like we just have a bunch of different revenues trickling in and that's how we make a living. What had driven us to search for a different way of life is that Curtis and I are artists and we were performers in comedy mostly and I painted in Curtis writes and we were working in hospitality so we were already not doing our passion job so we just started budgeting and started downsizing and eventually realized that we love to travel we love to be creative we needed to change things up so this lifestyle allows us the time to focus on what we want to do which not everybody gets a chance to do and we're very thankful to even have the opportunity to think about that because that's something we've seen on our travels it's a luxury to say i'm going to leave my job fortunately being in the hospitality industry we can always pick something up if we have to but knock on wood we've been like one year of employed by ourselves uh, and it's going well still here If you want to follow Heather and Curtis, you can check out their YouTube channel, which is called Travels of Heather and Curtis. We also want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN is a virtual private network service that you can activate to get a secure connection when you're using the internet. We use them all the time when we travel because of all the public Wi-Fi networks we use, and it makes us feel more secure when we log into important accounts. Using NordVPN is also a great way to make sure you're using the internet without censorship because you can choose the country that you're browsing the internet from, regardless of where you are in the world. For example, if we're in Canada and we want to browse the internet as though we're in the US, we can select a server in the US and browse as though we're there. And there's also no bandwidth limit, so you can use it as much as you want. If this sounds like something that might be helpful for you, NordVPN is offering our audience 75% off a three-year plan, which ends up being just $2.99 a month. To get the deal, you can go to nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives and use our Exploring Alternatives discount code to get an extra month free. So again, you can get 75% off when you go to nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives and use the Exploring Alternatives discount code to get an extra month free. We'll put all of this in the video description below if you want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.